Hi, welcome to The Collectible Show. My name is Aaron Lapidus, and I'm your host tonight. I'd like to welcome my guest, Bill Visas of Bill's Sports Collectible Store in Denver, Colorado. Bill, thank you for being on tonight. Oh, thanks for having me, Aaron. Bill is an expert in baseball cards. So all you closet card collectors, get ready to find out why you bought baseball cards instead of candy when you were 10 years old. Bill, I'd like to ask you, all about sports collecting, but we're only going to talk about baseball cards. Tell me a little bit how you got into the business. Uh, well, I started collecting when I was five, six years old, kind of as you got to high school, kind of got out of it, and then when I was about to, out of college, I you know, got reinterested in it and started going to garage sales, flea markets, accumulating cards, and that was the late 70s when the hobby was just starting to boom or whatever you want to say, and um, then opened a store on uh, South Broadway here in Denver in 1981. So. That was, that's over 20 years ago. Right. Tell me, it started, Denver kind of came behind everybody else on the, the transition of collecting sports cards. But tell me, how, when did the nation start collecting sports cards? Well, I mean, people have been collecting, the first cards were like the late 1800s, 1886, 1887, the first card sets. Then after World War II, it was a um, uh, company called Tops, which now is just celebrating their 50th anniversary this year, doing baseball cards. They, it you know, kind of started with tops, and so all the kids in the 50s and 60s collected cards. And then I think basically the late 70s, the 80s, and the nostalgia craze started to happen. And then cards became like a more of a chic thing that, you know, because it was like once you turned 14 or 15, it wasn't cool to collect cards anymore. Yeah, and, and I hear the only reason why we should thank the tobacco industry from being around <laughs> is they probably started the craze way back when with the very first um, sports card. And I think we have one. Could you tell sure. us a little bit about um, a little bit about tobacco cards. That card there is an Allen and Ginter card from the, about 1886 to 1887. And they were actually put in the tobacco packs as like a backing for the tobacco a piece of cardboard they had in there. And they just figured, well, let's put a baseball player on it. And I guess it was a way for kids to tell their dad, geez, go get that tobacco. Go get Allen and Ginter's or Old Judge. You know, Piedmont, there were different companies that put the tobacco, you know, the cards in their packs. And There's one name that comes to mind, <laughs> Honus Wagner. Tell me why his card is fetching several hundreds of thousands of dollars on the Internet. Supposedly there was only five or six of them at first. Now there's probably about 50, you know, examples of the Wagner card. They're just coming out of the woodwork. Are they printing more of them? No, it's just like, I mean, over the years people, I mean, you know, when you find out that a card, you know, you could sell for half a million dollars or something. People go and look in every nook and cranny of the, uh, the United States, and you know, they found a few. But the uh, thing behind that it was supposedly Wagner did not, you know, want his, uh, you know, uh, picture uh, associated with a tobacco product, and so he, they pulled his card early in the uh, printing from the uh, set. But you know, later on, there's been you know, he was in some tobacco advertisements that you know you know, seen after that time. So, you know, you don't know if the story is really true or not. So, like this card right here, how many do you think are in existence? In the few thousand, but like that card there where it's taped back together, and there's probably only 10 or 20 or 30 that are in wonderful condition. Here's another one. And what's the value of this one that I'm holding? Uh, that one, uh, depending on the condition, but that card could be, you know, up to $1,000. That's like Jackie Robinson's, one of his first two or three cards that ever produced of him. And, and how many are, are of this? And there's probably, there could be like 10, 20,000 of those cards available, I mean, you know, out there somewhere, but the condition is going to vary all along the way. And the whole of the swag is, because you mentioned a few thousand here, a few, <laughs> how many of these? I mean, you don't know exactly, but they're, those are type of cards, like in my store, in 20 years, haven't picked up 30, you know, Allen and Ginner car cards from the 1880s, so. So nope. being only a few like the Honus and Wagner, that right. really helps the value of it. Correct. I want to thank my guest, Bill Visas from Bill's Sports Collectible, and I want to thank you for tuning on in. I'm Aaron Lapidus, and remember, one person's trash is another person's treasure, so keep collecting and have a great night. What happens if I signed it? Would that help the value? Yeah.